Hello everyone! I'm finally getting around to filming your most requested video, my houseplant tour. I'll try to keep it as short as possible so we won't be here for too long, but you may still want to get yourself a nice drink as I walk through each and every plant in my collection. Firstly, let's put some music on. Welcome to our home. The first thing you'll see at the door is a gift from my in-laws from their trip to America. There's an avocado seed growing behind and on this cabinet is a selection of ivy. Starting with the Snow Queen Pothos. She's a slow and steady grower but oh so beautiful and as with all pothos, extremely easy to care for. The golden pothos at the back was recently repotted to climb upwards where in the past we had it trailing down along this cabinet. I think it's happier and looks a lot healthier since the repot. This cabinet is located furthest away from natural light source which is why pothos is the choice of plants in this space. Here's our marble queen. Although we brought this one home many months after the Snow Queen, she's growing quicker and I'm really happy with the variegation on every new leaf. In the kitchen is a glass full of aloe vera propagated from an outdoor plant. This one isn't in soil or water, and I just hydrate the roots once a week. Aloe vera is great to have in the kitchen to immediately soothe and heal burns. Right next to it is our Philodendra Brazil. It was much smaller with only a few leaves and looking quite sickly in the bargain corner when we first brought it home. This plant always reminds me about having faith and giving life a chance. I'm particularly proud of how well it's progressed since bringing it home. Up on top of our fridge are two plants. The Alocasia macroriza or elephant's ear and a larger pot of golden pothos with leaves the size of my hand. These two plants are big enough to fill the space but housed in lightweight pots so the fridge has no issues having them there. I've let the pothos naturally fall into the elephant's ear creating another layer of greenery to fill the space around the pot. Moving to the living area, we have this Syngonium Neon Robusta, an arrowhead plant with striking peachy pink green leaves. This is another plant that's great for beginners and featured in my easy to care for video which I'll link in my description box below. Next is a little Peperomia Polybotria also known as raindrop or coin leaf peperomia with round leaves that come to a point. It doesn't need much direct light and holds water well so just once a week keeps it happy. Diffenbachia or dumb cane reflector. It's browning a little from inconsistent watering while we were away and needs some TLC but there's a new leaf unfurling soon. The begonia maculata or polka dot begonia. I used to think the spots were white when I saw this plant online, but they're actually silver and sometimes called angel wing. The ever beautiful Stromanthi triastar, another stunner in the pinky green category and so beautiful to see the leaves move and dance around throughout the day. 
And the last pot on our shelf is this little Tredescantia tricolor that's a fairly young plant in our collection. Off the side of our shelf is this tall Tenantis dosa grey star which is a couple of years old now and outgrown its original pot with all the babies sprouting out at the bottom here. I still need to find a new pot for this one. It is the first summer it's flowered and it's pretty interesting. I couldn't find a lot of pictures of the 90 flowers online. Moving down to the ever popular Calathea macoyana, also known as the peacock plant or cathedral windows, which are such perfect names for this beauty. It was infected with spider mites recently, so I'll be cutting off some of the browning leaves with the growth of new ones here. This is our second Snow Queen Pothos that I originally picked up from Ikea for the husband's office, but he took the Zanzibar gem into work instead. It's a baby plant that only had four to five leaves for a few dollars and has grown steadily since. And this is also our second philodendron Brazil, which was a cutting from a plant loving friend. Super easy to propagate and grow. Next to our record player is our first snake plant, Sansevieria black gold. This was tiny when I first got it and has grown to a fuller shape now. I love the broad, solid dark green leaves with contrasting bright yellow edges compared to the Laurentii species. Complementing it is this gorgeous Caladium Hilo Beauty that some of you may have seen me unbox. I'll leave a link below if you'd like to check out that video. We've got a new leaf unfurling soon. Hanging off the side of our floor lamp is this Hemionitis arifolia, also known as a heart leaf or tongue fern. And on the other side of our couch is a string of dolphins. Our elkhorns from my Flower Power Garden Centre video are up on the wall. Then we have a philodendron birkin right next to the glass window. Here I'm trying to propagate a watermelon pilia or aluminium plant in hydro. And the interesting thing is the leaves can grow underwater. So here we have baby leaves that have sprouted in the past month. Over to the other side of the room and next to our TV is a variegated dwarf umbrella tree, also known as the Schifera Madame de Smith. We've left our self-watering owl to do its job and if you're interested to see how that worked while we were travelling, I'll also leave a link down below. Here are two other snake plants, the honey eye on the left and the golden honey eye on the right. The black and gold one you saw earlier was from IKEA and it grew so well, I decided to add another two different varieties to our home. To the right is our string of pearls cascading down a bowl. And string of turtles in a petite pot, which was also a great IKEA find. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to do a video featuring all the plants that I've brought home from IKEA. Just on the floor mat is this Peperomia Incan doll waiting to be repotted and a Hedera helix variegata or variegated English ivy that the husband bought for his office but it struggled in the office environment so he brought it home to recover. Looks like it's doing pretty okay now. On the other side of our entertainment unit is another string of turtles with this show-stopping Oxalis triangularis or false shamrock. It's due for repotting and we honestly can't believe how quickly this beauty has grown. In less than three months, we've gone from one of these shamrocks to all of this with flowers. 
I get so many messages about this gym whenever I post on Insta stories. It's definitely a crowd favourite. I'll try to record the leaves fluttering like butterflies when it opens and closes at dawn and dusk. Look at more babies growing from this small nursery pot. Next is this philodendron mycans. Both these plants were little bulbs and cuttings that have been growing side by side since day one. It feels so good to see them ready to graduate from plant preschool soon. Up on a kickstand is this Tredescantia zebrina. And while I love the pinkish tone on the tricolour you saw earlier, the rich purple and green with a touch of silvery sheen on this zebrina reminds me of beautiful brocade work on silk saris. I'm also still looking for a perfect pot for this. We've reused an old coffee table for this section of the living area and first up is this Calathea White Fusion. This is a stunning plant but unfortunately spider mites got to it recently. So it's been given intensive care and I think I've got it under control so hopefully the new leaves do well to fill this pot up again. Then we have this Philodendron Padatum or Florida Beauty. The abstract multi-lobe leaves are such a feature and only takes shape when the plant matures a bit and has sprouted new leaves a few times over. This low maintenance beauty also has air purification benefits. When we first got this, it was a pot full of single leaves like these. I'm going to start giving it support to climb as it continues to grow. The Jelly Peperomia Clusifolia. Again, can't get over. Um, let me remove this dead leaf. <laughs> can't get over a touch of pink with green, and this one borders on bright pinkish red that beautifully outlines each foliage. No fuss and really easy to care for. And on that topic, this has got to be the easiest plant to maintain in our entire collection. My all-time favourite, Aglonema City no Haliza. As mentioned in my other video, this plant is minimum care for maximum beauty. It's probably not showing up very clearly here, but the fabulous speckles and veining are actually a pastel pink and not white. It recently flowered and is the happiest Chinese evergreen. Up at the back is Calathea lensifolia, also known as the rattlesnake plant. The leaves are all standing upright at this time of the day, so I'll take a shot from above for a better view of the wavy leaves, green spots and deep purple underside. Towering over all the plants on this coffee table is our majestic Strelitzia nicolai, or giant white bird of paradise. Onto our tea and coffee bench is a pot of Spetifilum or Peace Lily Domino. I love the crinkly leaves and the white variegation on this. It's really opaque like white paint strokes. I've paired this with a small Aphalandra squarasa or zebra plant that also has beautiful white veining on the leaves. Both these plants have started browning on the tips, so I'll be looking into that this weekend. Personally, I don't mind it so much as they look natural, and I find that perfectly looking plants can sometimes look artificial, so I love for our plants to thrive and regenerate their leaves as they do if they were outdoors. On the dining table, or what has been our work from home desk most of last year, is this Peperomia caparata silver ripple that you may have seen in my Christmas gift wrap video. The silvery red tones on this give me a wintry festive vibe. 
Here's our Alacasia Amazonica African Mask in the cultivar Poly. The leaves make such a statement piece, so it was disappointing to see this plant struggle over winter last year. Thankfully, it bounced back and produced many new leaves and flowered this summer, looking its best self right now. So don't lose hope if your plants start looking a bit worse for wear. As long as the root system is healthy and alive, it has every chance to thrive again. Our Monstera Deliciosa is one of the oldest plants in our collection. Say hello to this new leaf that just unfurled last week. It's travelled interstate with us and is quite leggy so I was thinking of maybe getting another smaller one to combine the two in one pot for a lusher look. Moving into the workspace, these are two small aloes that I got simply to use these cute Mr. and Mrs. pots. Another one of our oldest plants, the Peace Lily, sits on my work desk. the relaxing corner of the room is a Peperomia Optusifolia Lemon Lime, an Alocasia Wentii that's kind of struggling a little bit, and our Monstera Adansoniae that's been severely infested with mealybugs, which is why it's looking sad at the moment. The treatment is ongoing and I'm sure it will get better with time. Let's see if I can get a shot of this nasty pest. There you go. Let me know if you're interested to see a video on the challenges I face with houseplant pests. In the bedroom are plants that are low maintenance and pest free, starting with my side of the bed, the Syngonium Illusion, the Calathea ornata and this is a beautiful large new leaf I was so happy to see because this plant didn't travel well and was stressed during our move so it's taken a good couple of years for it to recover and on the end of the table is this Syngonium batik that's due for cleaning out the old leaves and cutting it back a little On the other side of the room is our Zenziba gem, or commonly known as the Zizi, that thrives on neglect. And I've got a small medley of Hawothia in this pretty pink pot. My husband's side of the bed has a Clusia rosea, also known as an autograph tree. Named so because you can actually etch words on the dense leaves. I once had a friend ask if we sleep with a fiddle leaf fig branching over our bed. The answer is this, Raphidophora tetrasperma, also known as the mini monstera. This is a combination of two very small plants, repotted into one and having multiplied five times in size now. 
It is definitely a beautiful sight looking up when we're laying in bed. And my husband absolutely loves this feature in our room. This elephant ear lives in the corner of our bedroom next to the window. It's much taller than the one on top of our fridge and it matures every time a leaf turns yellow and a newer, larger leaf grows. This happens once every couple of months and when the older leaf dies, a new one is being produced from the existing stalk right here. In the bathroom, I've kept it really simple with a small aloe in glass, similar to what we have in the kitchen. It doesn't require light or to be in soil or water. Just run the roots under the tap once a week. Also part of our houseplant collection is this Begonia Rex. I believe it's a red tango, but I can't be sure. Leave a comment down below if you recognize it. But this plant was on a quick decline after bringing it home. So I inspected the soil and found that it was filled with death plugs. I cleared them all out, repotted in fresh soil and cut the plant down to its bare roots with not a single leaf left. Fast forward a few months and this is what we have. And that's the complete houseplant tour for 2020 into 2021. I haven't done a count recently, but my husband and I are pretty happy with the amount of greenery we currently have. So we don't really want to clutter our space with too many plants and be able to maintain a good minimalistic balance. So we've decided for every new plant we bring home this year, it will be either to replace a dead plant or one that we give away. A few of our plants have been attacked by pests, so they are still faring okay, but we'll see how they go throughout the year. And perhaps I could do another houseplant tour in 2022 um, to compare the difference and see if there have been any changes in our indoor oasis. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed seeing all the plants in my collection. As always, feel free to like, comment or subscribe for notifications on my new videos and I'll catch you in my next one. Take care everyone!